Um, the First Minister will agree with me that in order to secure value for money in public contracts, it's desirable that there should be a reasonable spread of credible bidders. It wasn't entirely clear to me from the answer which the Finance Secretary gave to Adam Price earlier what the legal impact is going to be of the collapse of Carillion in relation to a Berlioz bid. Uh, there are only three bidders in the contest at the moment. If a Berlioz uh, is removed from it, that means, of course, well, there are only two bids. Um, what are the implications of this for that general principle of securing value for money by having credible competition for these big contracts? This is a contract which affects not just the Wales and Border Rail franchise, but also the electrification of the Valleys lines as part of the Metro project. Uh, and this contract will be let for 15 years. So, so it has long-term consequences. I wonder if the First Minister could uh, give us a little more clarification on this point. Well, well it's no secret that our preferred uh, scenario would have been to be able to run uh, Welsh railways via a not-for-profit, uh, arms-length, Welsh government-owned business. But we were prevented from doing that by the Conservative government in London. Uh, happy to let Scotland do it. But as far as Wales are concerned, not happy to let, he's groaning away, the leader of the opposition again, not supporting this, of course. But the reality is that we were prevented from doing that. But that nevertheless was our preferred option. We were stopped from doing it. But he asked the question about a belly up. Transport for Wales has the appropriate expertise in place to deal with this. We're in discussions with um, Abellio Rail Cymru about the complex situation, and it is complex, it arises from the uh, announcement. Uh, whilst the difficulties encountered by part, part of one of the consortium bidders is disappointing, it is important we remain focused on the evaluation to keep procurement on uh, track. I can say that Transport for Wales continue to evaluate the competitive bids uh, received whilst ensuring a quality of treatment of the bidders in line with procurement law. Well, what's happened this week, uh, whilst it couldn't have been predicted with confidence, there was clearly a high possibility that Carillion was going to get into difficulties from which it couldn't extricate itself. After all, we had the first profit warning in July. In September, the shares in Carillion fell by 60% in two days. Three weeks after that, there was another profits warning. On the 17th of November, uh, the uh, Carillion uh, warned that it was on course to breach its banking covenants, which must have gone to the heart of uh, the credibility of that part of uh, Berlioz's bid. And considering they were the preferred construction partner, <coughs> this obviously had immense implications for the credibility of that bid. Um, was there any uh, action taken by Transport for Wales or any involvement by Welsh Government in the period after July to try to, uh, to protect the bidding process against the possibility of the collapse of Carillion's bid, uh, uh, not Carillion, uh, uh, Abellio's bid. Uh, because if Abellio had been able to uh, uh, obtain some other construction partner or keep one in the wings in the meantime, that might have been able to save this element of the bidding process. I think there are dangers in Transport for Wales engaging in that way with a bidder. Uh, there has to be distance between uh, Transport for Wales and the bidders themselves. It is a matter for Delia Rail Cymru to put themselves in a situation where they are confident that their bid can move forward and discussions will continue uh, along those lines uh, in terms of how that can be, uh, that can be done. But uh, we know that there was a profit warning in July. I don't think, well, hindsight is a wonderful thing, but I don't think anybody, let alone the UK government, could have known the scale of the problems within uh, Carillion. Cle clearly, they were unprepared, uh, and I think that uh, many would have found themselves in that situation. I think it, that the feeling might have been that Carillion was were too big to fail, but unfortunately, we know that uh, that isn't the case. But nevertheless, we are talking about a part of one of the consortium bidders. It's a question now to see whether that part can be replaced. Well, it's clear that the answer to my question is that both the government and transport for Wales sat on its hands during that period. But uh, I'll leave that there. Does the First Minister share uh, my sort of amusement that Philip Green, the chairman of Carillion since 2014, was an advisor on corporate responsibility to David Cameron and Theresa May as Prime Minister, uh, that the previous chief executive of, of Carillion, Richard Hurston was uh, allowed to leave the company uh, a few months ago with a 12-month payoff of £660,000 in salary and £28,000 in benefits. Whilst the company 
has been making small firms wait for up to 120 days for payment on their contracts. The, government, the Welsh Government has a policy on social responsibility in companies that are contracting with it, and surely prompt payment is one of the essential elements in that. The Welsh Government has a policy of paying all invoices on time, uh, and when the Welsh Government receives bids from firms for large contracts which uh, it's going to award or um, agencies like Transport for Wales, uh, what protection is going to be given to small firms who are now left, as in this instance, probably high and dry, lots of them will not be paid, and that could be pivotal in whether, uh, the question of whether small businesses themselves, as a ricochet effect from the collapse of Carillion, also go out of business. Cash flow is all to a small business. Uh, it's not clear yet what the extent of Carillion's collapse will be on small businesses in Wales. I know that the uh, Cabinet Secretary is um, looking to obtain information on that. But, of course, what we can't do is govern the way in which large businesses run themselves. There are many issues there that the Leader of the UK has rightly highlighted. Uh, moral issues, and it seems to me that quite often in, in some businesses, not all, of course, not in most, that payments are, bonus payments are made regardless of performance, and also that people are paid off with substantial sums of money uh, in order to, uh, to go away even where performance is well below the standard uh, expected. There are issues there. There are issues in terms of how empowered shareholders are. They hold, of course, the board to uh, account, but in terms of knowledge, expertise, it's not quite as easy as that. And I think there are, uh, as a result of what we've seen from Carillion, uh, lessons to be learned in terms of looking again at company law and the way in which companies govern themselves. Is there sufficient governance in larger companies to ensure that this kind of situation doesn't happen? We see from Carillion that the answer to that is no.